This is The Sand Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is this incredible custom racing wheel rim by Sam Maxwell Customs. Now, being a custom rim, it doesn't have a model name. It is custom built by Sam Maxwell Customs, but as you can see, it says SMC, so we're just going to call it the Sean Michael Cole model. Now, recently on the show, we, re we reviewed for you open wheelers a very nice formula style custom built wheel based on a Dallara blank. But this wheel, instead of being specific for the open wheeled racer, is more for the all around racer. It's based on a round wheel and then it has some other extras thrown in to make it even cooler. I want to thank Chris P for sending me his wheel. This is actually his wheel. It came from Sam Maxwell Customs to me first to let me get my greasy hands on it and then I'll be sending it to Chris. But thank you, Chris, for your generosity in sending this in. Now, if you go to the Sam Maxwell website, you will find a few stock wheels available. But for the most part, each wheel that Sam makes is custom built, which means that you can actually contact him, make decisions based on what you actually want in the wheel and the end result, a custom built wheel specifically for you made out of parts that belong in a real race car. However, in the end, it also ends up costing you somewhere around $1,200 in the case of this custom wheel for Chris. When the box arrives and you open it, you will find the wheel wrapped nicely in bubble wrap, giving you no idea what it looks like. But as you unravel the bubble wrap, you get down the wheel in a final protective cover. And then finally, you pull it out into the light and you get your first look. It's gorgeous, it's professional looking, and it reeks of big money. But in the end, it's still a sim wheel built specific for you. So let's take a look at the Shawn Michael Cole edition of the Sam Maxwell custom wheel rim. It all starts with a 300 millimeter or 11 and three quarter inch wide suede covered round wheel. It has a black aluminum center spoke and a black suede covered rim. The rim has no ergonomic deformations and it is fairly round in its grip shape. However, the main hand area is a little more flattened out than the top. In the grip area, you will find the wheel to be about one inch or 25.5 millimeters wide on the front and then about one and a half inches or 38 millimeters thick front to back. This provides for a good, strong, comfortable grip. It then has a carbon fiber cover over the center hole, which really gives the wheel a complete look and brings my initials into the picture. The wheel is then mounted to a button box, shifter, and display box. This box has a nice real carbon fiber cover and is about one and a quarter inches or 31.75 millimeters thick. Within the box is the Pro Race 2 SLI that provides not only the display integration, but it also includes eight buttons and four rotary dials. Starting off with the display, it's an SLI type display with a rev bar at the top, a left and a right multi-digit display, a central gear indicator, and then six additional warning lights, three on each side of the bottom. On the back side of the box are the paddle shifters. Each one is a magnetic type shifter with a very strong release click and thick carbon fiber paddles. The paddles are very rigid and have about a quarter of an inch or 6.5 millimeters of travel. They are adjustable in and out to two different positions and then you can also adjust the distance from the back of the wheel rim by moving the spacers around. In the stock configuration, they are set back about 1.25 inches or 31.75 millimeters from the back of the wheel rim. On the back of the box, you'll find another real carbon fiber plate with the now familiar and my favorite quick release, the Q1R. With the quick release installed, the front of the wheel rim will extend a little over four and a half inches or about 115 millimeters from the mounting point. You also find the house shaped plug-in for a USB wire. Overall, it is a very stout or sturdy piece of hardware and it is also fairly heavy for a sim wheel. Now the installation is actually very simple. The Q1R quick release on the back has your standard 70 millimeter, your standard bolt pattern for most steering wheels. You can also get it in the smaller, I think it's a 50 millimeter size as well, but this is the one that you're gonna find on most conversions and most real car steering wheels. It is perfect for direct drive wheels and any wheel that has been modded to a standard bolt pattern. If your wheel is ready to go, you are six quick bolts away from having the quick release mounted to the base. 
and the ever so easy and quick Q&R quick release away from the wheel on that base. Very simple. You will then need a USB extender to plug the wraparound wire into and then secure that to your rig. You then need to download the software for the Pro Race 2 SLI from Sim Projects and install it on your system. That software must be running when you are driving and there is a little bit of configuration get it dialed in for each sim. So with the Pro Race 2 SLI display being so specific to this particular wheel, I'm not going to go into great lengths showing you how to get it all set up, but I will be showing you some of its features in use while we drive it. So speaking of that, it is time to get down and driving. Now when you get in your rig, you have this dialed in and you put your hands on it. I mean, for starters, this suede wheel is so beautiful and it's not mine. If you take a look at my suede wheel, you'll see it's all waxed over all over the place. Now in the case of this being Chris's wheel, I didn't want to do that to him. So I actually busted out my real driving gloves and wore them for every moment that I actually drove on this wheel because I didn't want to hurt it or even give it any discoloration or waxing at all. But let me tell you, it was a pleasure from the minute I put my hands on it. And I have to say, this is one of the nicest wheels that I have ever used or touched. In my sim racing, I find that I change from road to oval to rally or whatever, and I prefer a round wheel in the one wheel fits all disciplines debate. But looking past that, the Sparco wheel rim is a great dimension. Not too big and not too small at 300 millimeters, and again, fulfilling my need for a one wheel in all situations requirement. The suede is smooth. There are no out of place stitches or spots that I find with my hands. At one and a quarter inches, I find the thickness of the wheel perfect and allows for a strong, comfortable grip. The wheel rim itself and including the button box was amazingly rigid. There was no flex from the wheel the box, or even the quick release, and this really made my direct drive wheel setup feel even more rigid, pro-built, or like real race equipment. I also didn't experience any creaking or strange noises from the setup while in use, even under extremely heavy loads. The button layout is a total common sense layout, and it gives me more than enough buttons on the wheel. The closest and most operable buttons are the ones on top, with the lower being totally usable while driving, and the upper being just a little bit of a reach with one of my hands. On the lower set, I have to rotate my hand in order to operate them, but it can be done while still holding onto the wheel. But all four dials, for the most part, require me removing a hand from the wheel to operate. I spend most of my time racing in headphones, and this makes it hard to hear much of anything. This also makes me fairly sensitive to the click that a button has, more in feel than in noise. These buttons have a good feeling or a good click when you press them, so that as a driver, I know that my request for the button actually occurred. The four dials are rotary and turn left and right with a total of 20 clicks making a full circle. They work like two different buttons with left and right being different buttons. It is not actually a positional dial and that actually makes it very sim friendly. The shifter paddles, as I mentioned, are carbon fiber paddles with magnetic operation. Again, the click or the sensation you are given when that magnet releases and that paddle engages, it is very easy to know that it happened by the feeling or the sound that you hear. It takes a certain amount of pressure to make it engage but once that pressure is achieved, the full movement and click is going to occur. This is nice for when you're driving in headphones and it also gives the wheel another level of that pro feel to it. The display is a really nice addition to the wheel. Granted, it's somewhat redundant because most of our sims offer that information in other ways. However, it is really nice to have it on the wheel as well. You can also control the information that is displayed through the software, including being able to map buttons or dials to control the display's output. I can change from miles per hour to lap times, sector times, water temp, engine temp, a whole variety of different information can be displayed on the left and right displays. And each display can be programmed to rotate through various different information. There are also six indicator lights at the bottom. I can also adjust what these do, for example, 
flag conditions, or temperature warnings. You can also adjust the brightness of the display via the software. Now for those drivers who sit in a formula position or have your wheel up in front of your monitors, you're really gonna enjoy this display. But for a lot of GT drivers, they're gonna have their wheel mounted lower than their driving view, and they will actually need to look down to see the display. In addition, by being mounted on the wheel, it is always turning, making it a little harder to watch the information being displayed at times. But even keeping all that in mind, I used the display for certain information and found the rev lights to be even more noticeable than the ones on screen in the car. I also found that it really added to the sexiness of the wheel and again gave it that super pro look about it. Now earlier in the review I did mention that this wheel has a bit of heft to it. It is a heavy stout wheel and that did affect my overall force feedback. I found the extra weight deadened some of the light force feedback effects, but had no effect on the big hits. In the case of my Leo Bonner base, this wasn't a big deal, but for those using it on lighter wheelbases, you might find it sucks a little bit of the power in turning this additional weight or spinning mass. So after hours of driving, I found everything about this wheel to be a total pleasure. I mean, it looks great. It feels great. Everything on it functioned perfectly. And I got to tell you, this is like the icing on the cake of the perfectly built rig. And then to top it all off, it even has my initials on it. But if there is any misunderstanding of my overall thoughts of this wheel, let's break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, and that is, it's absolutely gorgeous. Customizable, built to spec. Very comfortable high quality buttons, switches, and dials. Magnetic shifters, strong click. Very rigid wheel, no flex. Built for direct drive or heavy duty wheelbases. Coolest quick release I've ever used. Large, full-sized rim. Incredible craftsmanship built-in display, adjustable display on the fly, built to last. And now onto the not so good. And the first one, you know what it's gonna be. It's obvious and there are so many counter arguments to it, but you gotta admit, it is very expensive. Display can be hard to see at times. External USB wire. Same as most other aftermarket wheels. Limited buttons in super close range. It's a heavy wheel and that might deaden your force feedback just a teeny bit. And now onto the bottom line. Sim racing is a hobby that allows you to get into it at a very affordable price. And then if you get the bug, you start upgrading your gear. You go from a T300 to a T500 or a TX wheel. You go from a CSL to a club sport uh, wheelbase. You upgrade your pedals, you upgrade your rig. That's what happens. You start out at an affordable level and you grow and you grow and you grow. And then maybe you get to the point where you're considering a direct drive wheel or you even wanna upgrade the normal wheel that's on any of the bases that we've already talked about. Those options are available. Now, when you're looking at somebody who spent one to $4,000 on a direct drive wheelbase, and for the most part, direct drive wheelbases don't come with any kind of wheel rim available at all, you're looking at other options. And sure, there are a lot of options. You can get adapters that'll allow you to use Fanatic rims, adapters that'll let you use Thrustmaster rims, and maybe for a small amount of money, you can get your wheel operational. However, does that really reflect the purchase that you made when you stepped up to a direct drive wheel? And I personally, I use a Rickmo Tech Momo modded Thrustmaster internal heart and it goes about 500 bucks and I love it. And it's a great addition to my direct drive wheel. But at the same time, does that reflect a $4,000 wheelbase. And that's where a wheel like this comes in, where you're spending $1,200. You're spending even more than that in some cases, but maybe you're getting custom-built features just the way you want it, particular display, 
particular layout of buttons, particular wheel shape or rim. All of those options become available, but they do come at price tags of $1,200 to $2,000, extreme prices. But again, if you got to that point where you went from a hobbyist to somebody who got that bug and you've upgraded everything else in your world, it's right in line with the pricing that you're gonna do. Now, I love this wheel, and there are a lot of options available when you get into this pricing, and believe it or not, but it just comes down to the features you want, working with the company you trust, and getting the craftsmanship that you really like. And that's something that I really liked about this wheel. It was, it was, I don't know how Chris did it, but he picked a wheel that would have been perfectly represented by what I'd want in that all-in-one wheel. It's not even a flat bottom. It's not ergonomic. It's not a butterfly wheel. This is a wheel that I feel like I could drive any discipline, any time, and be perfectly happy. I mean, I almost don't need a quick release, but that's nice if you're using a formula style rig and getting in and out, or if you do switch from wheel to wheel. The only downside that I can really find, legitimate downside, comes down to like the plug-in cable. And this is not unique to Sam Maxwell custom wheels. This is not unique to any of the add-on wheels. Almost all of them involve a USB plug and you have the wire that goes around. Now, I only turn about this much. It's not a big deal, but it is just one more little thing that is different. Uh, and the options to cure that are very costly and completely change your rig design. But all in all, I did love this wheel. It is what it is. I hate using cliche statements like that. But when I think of the bottom line, I don't expect most of you to even think this is normal or reasonable. But for people who have really built up super rigs, triple screens, elaborate rig designs, whether it be an expensive purchase bot rig or a, a profile or a DIY, but once you get to that certain point and you've filled in every component, you've upgraded all the way, again, this is right in line. It looks the part, it feels the part, and it's even at the right price considering it against the other equipment that would be on your rig. So I think I've covered everything. I hope I've told you everything that you would want to know about this wheel. You can go to Sam Maxwell Customs website and you can look at the pre-done models. You can look through the inventory of custom ones and all you have to do is contact Sam and get one custom built for yourself. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope even if this isn't your cup of tea that you enjoyed looking at this beautiful wheel and that I covered everything that you could possibly want to know about it. This is the Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.